Um, so shall I make a motion to open this like board meeting? Yes, I think you better, Tim. Thank you. I make that motion. I will second that. And then I'll move that we open the CCI meeting. All right. We'll second. Second, that. Give me a second. Okay, cool. All right. So <clears throat> meetings normally held municipal officer being held remotely with adequate alternatives of public access and where required public participation providing accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, mass general laws, chapter 30A, section 20 until March 31st, 2023. The Zoom link can be found on the agenda posted on the town website. Excellent. Lily, have you been practicing? <laughs> how just, you want to ask me how many meetings I've had? <laughs> um, I just got so something much. from somebody <laughs> asking if the meeting is happening. Um, let me hmm? see. I, I, let me, uh, somebody texted me and my devices seem to be forgetting people and I don't know who it is, but they asked about the meeting. So I'm just sending them the link. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to do roll call okay. for the, the few of us that are on. Okay, so Jim Cambius, you are here. Julie. Here. Lynn is here. Here. Tim is here. I'm here, I think. Carolyn, you're here. Okay, so we are missing in action a number of other people. All right. Oh, hang on. So Kate Lawless says she's in the waiting room and I don't see her in the waiting room. What my Zoom is missing. Can you link off the web page? Because that's the one I used tonight and that worked. Uh, yeah, it is some there's something wrong with the waiting yeah, room is. on my Zoom. Okay. So I just let her in. Okay, good. So Kate. Kate's here. We're just doing roll call, Kate. Okay? Hi, I'm here. here. Yay. Okay, great. All right. And travel, Trevor will be late. Um, we'll see about the others as we go on, but we'll, okay. Um, are there any, as far as the minutes from September 15th, are there any corrections, additions? Okay, so if nobody's- Make a motion to approve them. Thank you. I second. Okay, yes, everybody. All right. Okay, sorry if I'm a little fuzzy here. <laughs> okay, thank you. That. You have a legit. Experience. Welcome back. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, just a little FYI. You know, I came back and my parting gift from Scotland was COVID, so I've been a little, you know, a little fuzzy for the past week, but I think I'm good. As good as can be. Okay, so we're going to start off with committee reports, and actually, there's. I think been a lot going on lately. So I'm going to start. I would just like to make a note before we go in, and that oh, is sure. that um, people have not been updating their committee reports on the drive. And um, and when I take the minutes, I say, please see the, the committee reports in the drive. I do also try to capture some of the conversation, but it is very important that people do this. Thank you very much. Okay, Tim, you had your hand up. Just wanted to ask a question. I don't know what committee I'm on anymore and what I'm supposed to be filling in. <laughs> <on the drive. laughs> you know, that's actually, Tim, that's a really good question because I was looking at, I was looking at the, um, you know, our makeup of the board. And of course, Darius, I mean, he's sort of, he said, if we ever need him, he'd be here. He gets all the information. If he looks at it, I have no idea. Uh, Let's see, Jennifer Remillard has not been in attendance for a long time. And I'm wondering, and I don't recall what committee she's been on and whether we should appoint someone else for her position. I think and she's the, is she the 350th? She's 350, which well, she's, I, she's I not on the, she's senior center. the committee, I thought. And historical. Historical. Right. Yeah, historical. historic. Yep. Okay. And senior center. Okay. So, you know, unless we can find someone else, I mean, you know, we are trying to be inclusive of all the committees, but so that's just something to think about. And then um, I know Satu is on the library, but Jim, you're also on the library, so you can. You couldn't make it tonight, so I'm kind of filling yeah, in. That, okay, that's great. So you can cover for that. <clears throat> Plus, you are also chair of the campus committee, Jim. Right. So 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just so maybe you know, it's having a conversation with Jennifer to see if she's going to be able to, or if not, let's think of someone else who may be able to cover, you know, one of those committees, or at least or at least get some information from her. Okay. So I. Um... She has been unable to attend the senior housing committee. So it's a very similar thing. Her yeah. this job, it takes a lot yes. and, and also has night meetings and things like that as well. So I, I uh, contacted her and we talked about it. And so she is leaving the senior housing committee. I don't know if she's officially submitted her resignation, but mm -hmm. anyway, I would recommend maybe Denise, if you could call her or something and just find okay. out. That's what I did and to, to get an understanding. <clears throat> I can check in with her. I mean, or if she's still on the other committees, she could always just send an email for me to report out for her, and that would be fine too. So I'll I'll make a note of that and uh, give her a buzz. Okay. All and, right. So, and so, what are we find going to do about Tim? Tim's question. I don't know, Tim. What um, work? <laughs> Tim has been really busy doing a lot of stuff. So. I know. I, I think he can report on select mid select stuff. board 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 related projects. There you go. Oh right. so, Tim, you were on CPC and MVP. Yeah, oh, MVP is I'm still MVP. Okay. And CPC is Alan and Lily, and and maybe they can get a person from that group to come in for CPC. And Conscom. And Conscom needs to point someone. I'll talk to um, Pete Law and see if he can get one of um, one of the other members to to do this. Okay. Well, I may as well do the CPC. I'll check with Alan, but mm -hmm. I'm already here. So yep. yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fine. I, I think the point was, you know, to have someone someone represent represent multiple committees to keep it, you know, keep it so we know we get a good understanding, but also keep it tight. So we don't have, you know, 22 people on, which gets a little more confusing. But okay, that okay. sounds great. Thank you. All right. So why don't we start off with? Um, I'm going to start from the top, Jim. Well, let's see. Um, the library. Um, our big news was, and, and I will let Julie fill in on that about the news about uh, potential revision in the debt status of the sewer plant, which then affects the borrowing for the library. So that was our big news at the last meeting. Um, um, we're, uh, uh, the trustees are, well, the, friend, the, the, the friends of the library had their book sale. So they're, they're doing some fundraising. The trustees uh, of the Tilton Fund and the library are, um, right now gearing basically doing a big um public relations push to try to get people to support it at the special town meeting um uh that you know phoning people and emailing and putting posters about how great libraries are in uh, uh various venues around town um and uh fundraising is kind of on hold until after the I mean, we're still doing it, but the the next big push will be after the vote, uh, when we know about whether or not the town has approved it. That would be that's apparently the time to then approach the potential large donors. Um, uh, I don't know who they are, but um, Eric Phelps does, and that's his job. Um, and so he's basically holding off until after that vote. So it's kind of a chicken and egg thing where. You know, it would make it easier to pass if we had big donors, but the donors don't want to commit until we have approval from the town. Um, so that's what the library is up to. Um, town campus, uh, we had a very brief meeting in September. Um, I don't, things are still progressing. Nothing, I don't remember anything new had come up at that meeting. <laughs> You're talking about the one that we had with the architect and the oh two months ago, yes. MBLC representative. Yeah, was, okay. Yeah, I think we ago, talked yes. about that. That one, that one answered a lot of questions that yeah. we had and, and cleared yeah. up a lot. But I think yeah. I've already reported on that. 
You weren't here for half. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. The September meeting was about was about the um, outreach, the piece for the that describes what the campus is. Right. Yes, and yes, and I wrote that. <laughs> Thank you for oh, right. Me. Yes, yes, I wrote that, and um, <laughs> we we printed up some copies. Um, uh, Julie very helpfully provided a map for it, so that yeah, I managed to get it all on one page. Um, and so that's. Um, I think there's some copies at the town hall now. Yeah. And uh, there'll be more to give out at the um, special okay. town meeting. And Jim, can you can you send that out to the group or could you put that oh, on absolutely. the Google Drive? At least I can electronically send it. Yeah, yeah that would be great because I haven't seen that. I mean, I, I think I did see the um, did see the draft and yeah, I was. You, you yeah. asked for bullet points, but when I tried organizing it in bullet points, they kept turning into paragraphs. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I left the bullets off. No, no, no. Th thanks for doing that. Yeah, I, I think that was really good. Um, yeah, I just want just a, a clarification. You know, even though the um, the sewer is separate from and it's not going to affect our debt ceiling. You know, and I understand the debt ceiling. You know, if we if we wanted to increase it, you know, then of course anytime we borrow, the interest rate goes up. But you know, I guess the point is that I'm just curious how you're going to use that with the library, because as far as I'm concerned, debt is debt, regardless whether it affects our debt ceiling. It's just a different kind of debt. True. And so I'm I'm just hoping that Eric does not misconstrue that so that people don't understand. No, but it does open things up a little in the sense that mm -hmm. it will not wreck the town's uh, bond rating. Okay. And gives us a little more flexibility. It does not mean that. It means that the library will not essentially preempt any future capital projects, which was what we thought was the problem. Right. Okay. We still have to pay for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thanks. Any questions for Jim? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to move on to Julie. Okay. I'm actually glad Jim mentioned that debt limit thing because it feels like a hundred years ago that we figured that out. But anyways, um, so let's see. Finance committee has been reviewing the warrant articles. We've got we've gone through and looked at all of them. We voted about half of them. The other half we will vote after the hearing on the sewer bylaw. So there's a hearing on the sewer bylaw next Wednesday, the 19th, and then there'll be a like a briefing session on all the warrant articles. After that, Finance Committee meets Friday and will vote, I hope, all of the rest of the articles and be done. Um, since we <laughs> saw like pretty much the last guest before town meeting. Um, we put together a, um, I think, clear and succinct description of debt that the town has right now and different scenarios for funding the library. If we get a state subsidy, if we don't get a state subsidy, various interest rates and the impact on people's taxes and um, also how that debt service lays out, you know, like in number of years. Um, and so that we have a like a PowerPoint that I'll present at the meeting next Wednesday. Um, and we also have a handout um, that we'll hand out at that same meeting and at town meeting. Um, for the debt limit thing, just to clarify that, um, go ahead, Lily, you have a question? Or? Yeah, so I'm curious. So the, the hearing, the public hearing is about the sewer bylaw, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but you're going to be talking about the debt service impact at that? Yes. Yeah, so that there's a hearing on the sewer bylaw and then the meeting keeps going. So after the hearing is done on the sewer bylaw, then there's a meeting. And this is a select board thing. You guys should Thank be you. saying okay. it. But, I, I, um, I thought it was. They're going to present like the whole warrant, I think. Well, what we want to do is explain there's a lot of confusion on the, um, you know, sewer bylaw question. So we're, we're going to try to simplify. <laughs> what we're trying to achieve. And, and we have to have a public hearing anyway. 
And then, um, I mean, that's required. So then we're gonna go into the information all night. We, this started out as not all that many, that many, that much stuff, but by last night we adjusted, you know, the church amount and everything. I mean, there's quite a lot of financial articles on it now. So in the, since last month. So we, we really got to have some explanation to people why we're spending money. <clears throat> there's good reasons, but it's important to let people know. Yeah. Good plan. Okay. Sorry, Julie. I didn't That's want to okay. Do you guys want the debt limit explanation? Um, I'll try and do it in like 30 seconds. It might take a minute. I called Tom Scanlon, who is the auditor for the town. He's also the auditor for like 80 other towns. So he is all over this stuff and had a very interesting discussion with him. Um, and he said that if you read the debt limit law, um, there is a debt limit and there there's sections of it Gosh, I didn't have this all prepared to explain. There's different sections. So there's section seven, which is pretty much all of the debt, just like plain old debt that you take out. And there's a limit on that debt of 5%. There's section eight debt, which is exempt from that limit. Sewer falls in section eight debt. Brenda went back and looked at the paperwork for our actual debt. And it does say section eight in there. So it is definitely not under our 5% debt limit. So that will be ignored. When you ignore the sewer and the potential old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, then we are nowhere near a debt limit and it's just not an issue anymore. So the debt limit is not an issue. I agree with you, Denise. We still got to, we're taking all this debt out. We still got to pay it off. So that's definitely still, still something to worry about, but there is not a debt mm -hmm. limit um, worry. And further, Tom Scalin, so there's been this sort of nebulous, well, it might hurt your um, bond rating. And he was pretty firmly of the opinion that that also is not that big a deal. What does affect your bond limit, your bond rating, is your ability to raise funds. So if you pass a prop two and a half override, then you have the ability to raise funds, and that's very straightforward. The other thing that adversely impacts your um, bond rating, which is something that we need to consider, is um, um, controversy, basically. So if people are suing each other and going to court and you're having trouble getting things done, then that can actually start to affect your bond rating. Um, so yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I have the notes that I wrote down from him. He was more articulate about it. Um, yeah, so what he says is detrimental, what, what is detrimental to bond rating is poor management, poor reserves, demographics and economy. Demographics and economy, you pretty much have no control over, so we don't pay any attention to that. Reserves, we're in good shape because we have very healthy reserves in town. And then management is consistency, having policies in place, managing your local receipts, all of which we do very well. Um, but then this whole like contention piece is, is the, the only piece that becomes, um, I don't know what might affect it. Town building advisory committee, I guess I should report on them too. Um, we hired an OPM. We issued, I think I reported that we issued the RFQ. We hired a, um, what you call it? A designer, um, an architect, and um, the first meeting with the architect and the OPM is, I think it's going to be tomorrow um, with um, Casey, and then Town Building Advisory meets next Tuesday evening with the OPM and hopefully the, the architect again too. So they're um, hitting the ground and getting started. So, so on the 18th, TBAC is going to meet with them. Yep. At 6.30 or 6.15. 6.15, I think. Yep. Is that a public meeting? Yeah, yeah. it's posted. Who is the architect? I'm just curious. BHNA. Hmm. Um, they did a lovely job of presenting it. They, they're a big firm. Um, they're from out east, from like Boston area. Um, they've done a ton of 
historical projects that are pertinent to what we're doing. And they had example after example of, um, and like directed at our building. Here's a problem in this building. Here's something we've done in a different building that solved that. So um, it was, you know, they're, they're extremely competent and very responsive. Um, so let's hope that it goes. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell, but let's hope it goes well. What was the time? Tuesday? Tuesday at 6.15. And that's in person, Julie? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Because now I've got a CIPC meeting next Tuesday at 5.15. Okay, oh, that's okay. That can be in person too. Okay. All right. Thanks. Do you still want Tim and I to be attending these? Um, you're, you're welcome to. Um, it's a public meeting, but... Um, no. Well, no, because we were on for the OPM. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's we should not... probably talk about that. If you want to be part of the overseeing the progress of the building, I, I feel like we need to, uh, this is a little much for this committee, but I, I kind of feel like we need to split off and have a separate team that oversees the building. And right. then like, we don't necessarily need the whole TBAC to do that. And there may be a couple people on it who don't want to be involved in every meeting about mm -hmm. the building, but want to stay involved in sort of TBAC general yeah. stuff. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. So um, anything else or does anybody have any questions for Julie? No, but I see John Petrarch's on. Hi, John. I do want to say something, actually. Julie, I never thought that a conversation with an auditor would, auditor would be interesting, but thank you. That was interesting. <laughs> yes, very informative. Because I'm like, I had this fascinating conversation and I'm like, about debt. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Well, it is exciting. <laughs> okay. Well, Tom Tom is a good source because he has so much experience statewide. He's been doing this for a while. So, you know, he gives us good advice. Julie, did he explain that why Section 8 is not treated the same way? I mean, is it because it's got fees associated with it that are not taxes or did he not I just ask um, okay. when you look at Section 8, it's like major municipal it's stuff like sewer, water, um, uh, incinerators, um, trash, you know, dumps. It's like major municipal infrastructure kinds of things yeah. um, that may be, at, uh, it even has like um, phone utility, you know, if you have stuff like that, electric utilities, that kind of stuff. So it's right. like big major stuff and golf courses, but I figure the Air Force wrote it, but. Um, so like a geothermal field might come under that as well, huh? I don't know. No, because it's not. Uh, I, I, we'd have to read it again. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway. It's very specific. Like if you read through it, it's very clear. And it, it says exactly what it is. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Jim, all of the examples you cited uh, are things which can, which have user fees at least potentially associated with them. They do. There's also like if you build a memorial for a veterans okay. is another one. Um, so there's a that couple that aren't, but I think there's a couple that are special interests that probably got sort of added in and um, most of them are major things. Okay. All right. Okay. There are no other questions. I'm going to move on to Lily. All right, senior housing. Um, it's all in my committee report, but basically, we're waiting to be able to sign the contract for the market feasibility. We got the survey back. We are doing the various cross tabs analysis on it. Um, just a minimal one because LDS, the market people will do more of an in-depth taking it apart, but we're finding that there's absolutely not one person opted for a studio. Um, and I think three people opted for a, one bedroom with a den. No, it's not quite that bad. 
but the by far the vast majority want two bedrooms in a den or two bedrooms. And um, these are only, we're only looking at the people who said they would definitely move in or would definitely consider moving in. So it's kind of interesting in that, in that regard. But lots more to find out. We've got to break it down by income and considering who we're trying to serve in this housing and all that kind of stuff. Um, we had a wonderful meeting with um, a woman from Berkshire Design Group, and we're still waiting to get her proposal. Um, she's a landscape architect, and this is about the site feasibility. And um, thinking that senior housing can then cover the costs of um, soil hydrology um, and a bunch of other things like site, that. Deline site delineation. Yeah. Yeah. So um, by having senior housing in, on that campus and looking at that site, we'll be doing that. We um, talked, we made sure to tell her that we anticipate this field will be um, geothermal deep boreholes. And so we want when the soil hydrolo and the hydrologies, hydrologist types do their analysis to bear that in mind. So um, we're hoping that that will contribute to the, you know, the, the process um, and that's done through CPC funds. Um, so we're waiting to get the proposal back on that. And that is where we are at. Great, thanks Lily. Any questions for Lily? Can you start screen sharing? Um, I can do that. Um, I will also say, since we had a CPC meeting last night, that um, I strong-armed Alan into being the chair for <laughs> for a little while while uh, Frank Leone um, comes up to speed because we have so many new people. Uh, we continue to have a problem. We do not have a planning board representative on there. Um, we and the rec department, Sue, has not been able to attend any meetings yet. So um, hopefully, I mean, I don't, I'm not entirely certain what's going on with that, but uh, we, we need somebody from the planning board too. So that's the status of the CPC, but we've established our regular meeting schedule. Agendas are posted. Alan's gonna be chairing and we are moving forward. Okay, so. <clears throat> Jim has okay. a question. Uh, I'm yes. sorry, I got a little lost in the sea of acronyms. What are, what are you waiting to sign a contract on? <laughs> on <clears throat> on uh, the market feasibility study for okay. senior housing, which that looks at the demographics and the economics of the region along, and it takes the survey information and, you know, looks how they intersect. And is there a market for what... Um, we can build and and what we'll, we'll, we'll actually it is like what is the market and if the market is all people who make more than seventy five thousand dollars a year then we're going to be a little challenged anyway oh you went to Sanderson I did very cool and it was very interesting um, this building doesn't have a really huge footprint so I just wanted to see that in person and and John Pachork has been over there as well. Um, and they're on punch list now. They're getting close to completing the project. And there is a historic preservation component. I guess the old Sanderson home um, is, as part of this project, was preserved and extended. And, um, and then uh, I took some other pictures, but I just wanted to show you it's, it's pretty good looking. And, uh, and they're about to award, they had 66 um, applications and they've got 33 units. And you, you may know more about this, Lily, size-wise and so forth, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, whatever gets built will be occupied if we're able to do something here. It may not be Deerfield people, it may be, you know, Sunderland or Waitley, but you can't restrict it anyway. So... Mm -hmm. Au contraire, you can. You can. Fully? Um, to, you can restrict it. Um, 
Oh, I can't remember the algorithm, but there's a, a significant percentage that you can restrict it for. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, so, even, the, even the lottery. Yeah. And that so you promise you can community. keep a, a large percentage for the resident for the residents of the community it's built in. Correct. Excellent. Tim was Sanderson. Is that is that the one in Sunderland? Yes. Yeah, it's on oh, 120 yeah. Main Street. Right, right. I mean, I've passed it biking, but like last yeah. summer, but I haven't, you know, looked at that recently. Okay, great. Thank you. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Any other questions for Lily? No. No. Okay. I'm going to move on to Tim. Okay. So, um, Denise and and, uh, and Julie are familiar with this topic. We finished our geothermal application to the Department of Energy, um, largely thanks to Jerry Wang of GEI Consultants, um, which is based, I think, in Woburn. They've got offices in Woburn in any case, and, um, and FERCOG filed it. So um, I think we agreed it was pretty decent package when we were finally finished. And we had to do some quick juggling at the end to make the town the workforce component they have all these little categories that you have to fill and so we are now the community component and the workforce component and we'll probably need to flesh that out if we are one of the people that gets awarded uh, a design um, uh, award phase one is design and and it's feasibility and phase two is actually you know, awarding a larger sum of money to build the field. Um, so, uh, and and Julie, um, both Denise and I were in Europe. So Julie was the one that read the last and corrected things and pointed out omissions and so forth. Yeah. And so I think the next part of this is in December, they're gonna come back to us and say, can you flesh this out? Can you flesh that out? And then in December, is that when they, um, they close this down and then they make their decisions. Um, the other thing is that uh, we, the select board in the town received a, a letter from um, Deerfield Academy, Matt Sheehy, um, the CE, CFO of Deerfield Academy writing for the nonprofits. And um, they are proposing um, to meet with the select board to discuss whether they can, um, at their own expense, hire a separate engineering company to look at the old Deerfield sewer treatment plant. And with the idea being, can they design something that's more, um, to their mind, more cost uh, efficient? And um, the, um, with the understanding that even if they spend $200,000, the town and the select board can say, yeah, well, that's nice, but, um, you know, we still don't think that that fits, but so, and, but I do have a good feeling about us being able to be as close to revenue neutral and not affecting residents um, financially, uh, that at, that's, at the end of the day, we'll find a solution that um, <clears throat> will be good for everyone. Yeah, well, Tim, I, I just want to thank you for all the work that you did on that with Jerry. I mean, you were such a lifesaver and anybody else, Lily, Julie, who, who looked at that, it was a real fast turnaround. And I was sorry I wasn't it. I was able to be on a Zoom though, over in Scotland, I was on my way on a ferry over to a scotch tasting on an island and I was on a Zoom. So that was really cool. Yeah, it was, it was nice. <laughs> That was, really motion sickness. that was the easy part for me, but, but thank you all for doing that. So I, I, I have a question for Tim. Um, you were saying that you were feeling good about being able to be close to revenue neutral. Is that dependent on passing this new sewer bylaw, that feeling you have? Um, I believe that the passing the sewer bylaw would be a good thing for the town. Um, and it would certainly um, clarify you know, some mechanisms for paying for the sewer if we don't come to some understanding that everyone thinks is workable. Um, and it will also uh, bring the town into the normal practice going forward of what other communities do. Um, and it will allow us to 
probably, well, if we get rid of chapter 236, it will allow us to write regulations that reflect state statutes so that you don't have to continually come back to rewrite bylaws and get them passed at special town meetings. Um, and so it will be more efficient in the long run if we do these things. There were some good discussions. Um, Jeff Upton brought up a couple of points at the, the meeting last night and one to do with the, the Act 1935 revisions that have been suggested. And um, I think the crux of it is that some of these things are difficult to understand the way they're written. And um, so we need to we need to finalize that with uh, the legal department and before we have to publish these things for final editions. One issue was um, the question of having no specified limits for what the town can, um, what all of these things are up to citizens to vote on. So that's the first thing. That's the beauty of the town meeting system is that voters ultimately decide. So um, if they don't agree with the plans that are brought forward, they can be rejected. Um, but it's a question of the act as written says that the, the, on these projects, the town will pay no less than 25% and no more than two thirds. And what was suggested by the legal, the Lisa Mead's um, office was to eliminate both the lower end and the upper end, because sometimes it might be 10%, but in a totally new project, it might be that the town is really responsible for most of it. Uh, but um, some people think that this might be hard for people to understand and that they, there's not a lot of trust in the country right now. Um, and so people will say, well, I don't have any problem with the current board, but so there might be some future board that does something. So the suggestion has been made to say, um, you know, in the act, not more than 25% so that there's an upper cap that people can say, well, my taxes are not going to go, go up any more than what we already got hit with on the other sewer. Um, so we have to figure out what that's the best thing to do. And then there's a, something in the, in the bylaws, uh, section 150-10.5, which raises some questions about the same, um, the same issue of, you know, how do you pay for this and, and how much of it can be the town and how much of it can be the users. So we need to clarify that too. And I've, I've got questions into um, Casey and Lisa to try and clarify in the next couple of days. I don't envy you, thank you. Yes, thank you Tim, that's, that's a lot of work. Julie has a quick question. Um, we have a finance committee meeting next Friday the 21st. Tim, do you think you're gonna be able to attend that? Cause we're gonna be talking about all this sewer stuff. Yeah, I, I, I let me make sure I have it on my calendar. I'm pretty sure I do. It's a, 4 30 yeah we, we wrote it down last night julie yeah uh casey already posted it as a select board meeting good okay yep 4 30 it's on there because we wanted to discuss some of this stuff i i know people are leery but it, about deerfield coming forward with their own design but i i think if we have a separate reviewer and We'll look at what we've already proposed or thought we were going to do and then what Deerfield's looking at. I, I, I just can't believe that we can't find some consens consensus on what to do. Yeah. I'm not the least bit leery about that. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. If they're willing to do that and if they can come up with a, a plan that's less expensive, more power yeah. to them. That's fantastic. And I also think that, um, you know, what would give me a level of comfort is um to one thing i'm going to ask matt she is if we go forward with this i would feel comfortable having somebody um and i talked with chief pachork about this a little bit somebody like eric meals sitting in while they're going through the dis discussion process so that he can say yeah, well that's a good you idea. know in the south deerfield plant we already have these systems in place so if you do something different in the other plant 
then we have to you know, maintain two systems. And, yeah. yeah. So, so just think about this issue while you're thinking about the design. And then the second part would be what we're doing more frequently now on large projects. Have a peer reviewer come in and say, you should have a level of comfort with this design. So it would be a smaller amount of money, you know, five or $10,000 to review this conceptual design. Maybe it's less because it is conceptual. Um, you know, it's not the actual building um, plan, but just so that we could say that EPA is not going to reject this plan in five years because you've done something that's not quite what is generally accepted practice. So, and I think both of those things will be acceptable to, to the nonprofits. So, yeah. Nobody wants to revisit this in five or seven years. Uh, no. This is going in for 20 at least, 2030. 50. 50. I'm with, I'm with Julie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. By the time it gets done, I would say fifty-two. <laughs> and I hope to be there to see it in fifty years. <laughs> I'll be the oldest person in Deerfield. That's that's pretty positive, Tim. But I, I think I'll be. Yeah. I'm not if, if, if anyway, you thank asking, you, Tim. <laughs> okay. I'm um, asking, what is the expected lifespan of the new plant? South Deerfield. 40 yeah. years, 40 years. 40 years? Yeah, we have a 40 year note on it, so it better be 40 years. <laughs> I mean, so we pay it off and then we immediately turn around and build a new one? <laughs> well, from what I understand this time, this time we're gonna do it differently. We're actually gonna put money aside to do maintenance and, you know, um, so. Yeah, oh, that's, what a concept. That's crazy yeah. talk. Wow. <laughs> God. <laughs> You're giving me chills thinking about that, Tim. <laughs> you know, you we've gone crazy if we're thinking about that. And we're all yeah. happy, yeah. cackling about that. Where do you get those crazy okay. thoughts from, Tim? Okay, I'm going to move on to Kate, who looks like an angel backlit in her oh, yes. room. My halo. Yes. Chilling on the couch here with y'all. It's great. Hi. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah, our, our um, town common committee has not met since we all met. So my only um, kind of task while we wait is to make sure that the mass DOT can meet with select board to talk about kind of how the mass DOT work, any work um, on the common will fit with surrounding state-owned roads so we're still I think what I understand from Casey is she's been in touch with um you know Carolyn Tim and Trevor to try to find a date that will work but um it hasn't been set as far as I know and then we have another um committee meeting next Thursday at 6 30 so we'll uh you know kind of keep tabs on what's happening but um Casey has um, tried, she's gotten some dates from us and we have been, and she has forwarded them to DOT. They just haven't committed to a date yet. So it is in, in process. Great, thank so, you. Well, yeah, well, I was wondering if Trevor was gonna be on the call, I could ask him, but I'm glad, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And I know from last meeting when we were all together, you guys were like, hold their feet to the fire. So I think that's kind of what I just said. Um, Casey, I'm gonna be the squeaky wheel and keep bugging you. So, you know, I know they're really overwhelmed in the town hall right now. So, um, and everyone's busy. So hopefully that meeting can take place and we can move ahead because it feels like, you know, we're, we're kind of almost there. We just have a few little, I mean, they feel like monumental, challenges right now, but it seems, you know, we have the, the money. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be overages, but um, anyway, we need that next step to happen. No, it's good. Thanks, Kate. I know that when MassDOT was here, maybe I said this last time, I don't even remember, it was sometime in the summer, you know, after the meeting, I stood there talking to a couple of the guys, and it was pretty apparent that they don't talk to each other. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. So I think, you know, I think it's really important to keep bugging them. Yep. 
Anyway, okay, so Trevor is not here. Let's see, I'm gonna go, John. I, I have a question actually oh. um, about the Leary lot. Uh, what's the status of that? And I don't know who to ask anymore. It was Tim, right? Okay, oh. well. Yeah, we go can, ahead. Tim. Do you wanna to go to, so the, the, the status of it is we have um, a warrant item that it talks about this. So we've gotten an appraisal, we, we've got a, a survey and an appraisal. We've defined this small sections. I think it's 5,600 square feet and 3,900 square feet or you know, approximately that we would do a swap to allow um, an access road to be connected to Elm Street. And the warrant item, correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn, is to see whether the town will authorize us to investigate a swap or a sale or transference. It's and transfer. once that occurs, then um, we've got us, do we have a separate one where we were trying to, um, or did we give that one up where we were going to have $50,000 of money to? No, uh, the CIPC actually just less, I, I, we just approved it, but um, we can go in, get into that, but that that is happening. Okay. I'll report yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no. Oh. I didn't mean to shut you up. Okay. So, Denise, are you ready for me? I'm, I'm doing. Um, the yeah. Yeah. Sure. We'll, okay. we'll do that and then go on to John after you. Since we're okay. okay. The CIPC just met. Um, and one of the articles that we approved was $50,000 for engineering and the, of the Leary lot. And the reason why we separated it, even though we have enough money, ARPA money, to do the Leary lot, it from you know, a staff point of view, it's overwhelming um, paperwork. You have to go through an RFP because you're then doing federal you know, laws apply. So we're putting $50,000 into engineering under contracted services for the Leary lot under um, free cash, coming out of free cash, just because um, of the audit auditing um, requirements and, and staff time that would be necessary to handle that. So if the town approves that and approves the land swap transfer of land, um, the town's value, we had appraisals done. So the town actually is getting almost twice the value of the lands in the land swap because we'll have access now to Elm Street. So hopefully um, this will be going forward and we can go out to bid because we have our ARPA money that the select board has already appropriated for the Leary lot. So that's moving forward quite um, fast if it was approved at town meeting. Um, I have a question, which is why when Kate was giving her report, it sprung to mind is, um, do we have to deal with mass DOT for the Leary lot at all? Because we're- No, because we own um, North Main Street on that side, yeah, by and then we own Elm Street. I mean, just going out onto Elm Street is you're exiting the parking lot. It's not any big deal. So, um, but we obviously, whatever design that we finalize, we have a preliminary design under the MVP program <clears throat> that would be then some of the information would then be used in the new design, but it would be, we would work with the commons committee to make sure whatever happens at the Leary lot flows into the project at the common. And that's one of the reasons we're trying to use Berkshire design is because you want the same flavor of and flow of, you know, all these projects working together. And then so, oh, oh, oh yeah. I was just gonna report about the church. No, I, I just haven't, I've got a question about the Leary lot since Emma is not on tonight. And she's on the energy committee. And I think you guys said, yes, go ahead. I think there's a group from UMass that's doing a solar planning opportunity. Okay, so do you know what's what the status of because there was some discussion that, you know, maybe it would make sense to do so solar canopy on the Leary lot so I'm not sure what's happening with that. Well, I'm not adverse to having that being reviewed as a possibility, but mm -hmm. truthfully, um, I, you know, we want green downtown. Mm -hmm. And so the 
basis of the MVP design was um, green infrastructure. So you have, you know, you're taking care of the water and the, but the, also to have green trees and stuff that would right. melt into the, you know, beer garden kind of mm -hmm. BC idea. Okay. So, so I'm not be, sure how that fit in. It may not be as an attractive asset to downtown having that there. Okay. Yeah, because remember when you were talking about the in the planning board, you're talking about different height buildings and different yeah, yeah, yeah. breaking up yeah. stuff. The Learly lot is going to be key to keeping the downtown attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Thanks. But she, yeah, she what has I, hand uh, raised, by the way, Denise. I didn't know. I'm you sorry. Who? Yeah. Yeah. I just the had chief. a question. Yes. Um, so, are you going to try to keep it as a green space by, um, is by landscaping, or is there it going to be a grass will, parking? Oh park? no, 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 no. It's going to be a parking lot, but um, it will have green scaping in it. Um, I, I guess the best example, I don't know if anyone can get up to Portland, but the, Portland, um, New Hampshire has done the unbelievably, uh, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I'm mm. sorry, has done an unbelievably wonderful job of their downtown. Um, I, I've had meetings over the years there, um, and I, I just can't believe the, the renaissance of their downtown and the, you know, just how attractive it is. And so that's sort of been the model that we're trying to achieve, um, or at least I've been pushing anyway. Yeah, because yeah, I know printing. some architects have been trying to push for, you know, instead of hardscape, you know, some kind of like gravel parking. Well, park. Port, Port, Portsmouth have had a huge success. I mean, now they have snow and stuff, so, they, but they've had a good experience. I've talked to their DPW up there. They've had good experience with, um, you know, your permittable, pavers and all that kind of stuff from parking but they had to move water we have a lot of water there's a lot of similarities between south deerfield village and you know portsmouth and so uh you know we've taught done a lot of conversations and i i i'm hoping to you know have a lot of that into our plan and and make it be re, you know more resilient and what we have to plan for to handle water truthfully okay. John, do you have a question? Sorry, I missed your hand. Uh, no, I just wanted to suggest to Carolyn in the board, if when you present this at special town meeting, that you have a copy of the perspective design that we did through the MVP. Okay. Because people always love eye candy. If you don't give them eye candy, you're going to have a lot of people at this meeting due to the library, and you're going to get a ton of pushback when you tell people you're spending five hundred plus thousand dollars on a parking lot. Yeah. People love, love, love visual. My job, <laughs> job is to protect you. Okay, we can dig up that plan. It yes. was really attractive. <laughs> yeah, no, you want to pass that out and you want to pass it out in color because people believe in what they see. They want a vision. All and right, it will that's actually a good suggestion, John. Good Just, I hated to pull it out because, you know, we've already deemed it to be kind of too expensive, but it will be something similar as much as possible just because it handles water. And that's what I was worried about with the addition and build out of Hampshaw and, uh, you know, future, you know, intense events that we have here in town. So um, it's key to have something to deal with it. So, you can always tell them the parts that you're going to pull out due to cost wise, but they still love eye candy. Okay. Yeah. There's, a lot of trees. There's a lot of trees in it, so it is pretty. <laughs> well, South Deerfield needs a little beautification, so I think that'll be really nice. Well, it, it's Need supposed to connect green. with the common. It's supposed to connect with the common and be lovely, so that'll be nice. it will make impression yeah. on people. I All plan right. to spend a lot of time in that parking lot once it's fixed. I, I, I think so, <laughs> honestly. I, I think because it'll be so lovely. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out there all the time. Well, oh, I know so won't my drunks leaving the bar at night when they park. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It will be too pretty. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna move on to oh, John. Keith has your hand up. Oh, gee. I have a quick question, and that is the the five hundred thousand. Is that going to be ARPA money? Um, yes. Yes. 
Uh, we, we're worried that it actually has escalated maybe up to 600 by now, but we have enough money. So um, hopefully we'll get it done and it'll be entirely paid for. So that will be good. That's our first section of ARPA money. Okay. Take out the hopefully part, Carolyn, and just say you're going to get it done. There's yeah, no, 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 we're getting it done, but hopefully we we'll have money left over that can be. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah, that's good. Project. Yeah, we want to get it done. Yeah. All right. No other hands up. John. Let's uh, go I don't on. know if I really have anything to report. What? Yeah. Nothing. I don't know. There's so much going on in my brain. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. John will have, we, we don't have a timeline on the, the park yet because, yeah. you know, we're still answering questions from DEP. And yeah. so hopefully things will get sorted out. And by the time we meet again, we'll have a, some timeline stuff. And it was other good the newspaper finally published the grant. We kind of kept that on the down low for a while. We never really advertised that. So it was good for the residents to see that we got the $930,000. Yet what a lot of people don't realize is that that grant is good for up to three years. It does not have to be expended within one or two years. So we actually can apply for a waiver for year three and that, that funding is good all the way up through June 30th of 2025. Wonderful. Good, good, good. Okay. All while we're tied up in the legal process. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so much fun. Yeah, I think um, Tuesday I have a painter coming in to look at town hall. I think a couple people are in the loop on that. Uh, just do, doing some exterior work, just shoring up some work there. Um, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., I think we're meeting with kickoff architects for the 1888 building. And I don't know what else. What else, what else do I do? Um, I, I just, just want to mention one other thing. I, I don't have any MVP updates, but because um, we, di we didn't do the cycle, but I, John had sent me an article on Quebec, can uh, Canada Hydro. Quebec Hydro is buying the dams on the Deerfield and the Connecticut. Um, it just came out today. So this is new information. We had a dam inspection reports. There were some concerns into Sherman, the um, Somerset, and Somerset and Harriman. So they're on our tickler. I asked Casey to make sure that we connect. But um, as a safety item, I set the agenda next week for my Franklin Conservation District. And we're gonna write a letter to FERC because we were already mm -hmm going to intervene um, with a letter to FERC on the relicensing, but there is definitely going to be a relicensing process now because of the sale. So we'll make sure that they're all considerations on the dam or dams are being make sure they're in good shape before the sale is approved from FERC, which is a, you know, it's a pretty serious concern for us actually. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We've never had this many dam um, you know, two fix items in each at each dam. It's not ever been that bad. So Carolyn, is is, is one of them the one that's up near the Shelburne potholes? Yes. Yeah, that dam. What, what number is that? Wilcox is that Hollow. Dam. It's a Deerfield Five, but mm -hmm. that one was a minor like washout on the um, you know, the spillover. But the mm -hmm. other ones were actually soft you know, soft areas in the, dam you know, these are earthen dams. So when you yeah. have soft areas and we've had extremely, extremely dry year. So to have soft areas in the dam is not good in my mind. Mm -hmm. So um, I, we're going to follow up on that. Mm -hmm. I just have something to say about, you know, that Wilcox Hollow um, up in Shelburne Falls, that was a place I would take my kids, you know, it was a great little recreation area. Um, but they never, once TransCanada bought it, wait, Canada Hydro, is that a different company? No, no, Great Hydro. Great Hydro brought it from TransCanada. Great okay. Hydro was an investment banking group. And they, although we complained about TransCanada, this investment group had just, you know, their EOC and everything was just very minimal, no staffing, nothing. So yeah, there are some serious concerns. 
Because when I look at that grid, that, that that dam, it looks like there's sheets of plywood. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> how like is that? yeah. Yeah, they lift them up and down. And you shouldn't, anyway. it, it, that's not, you shouldn't get too worried about that one. But, <laughs> wow. Okay. It's the earthen dam ones that are soft in the middle of a drought. That's yeah. the one at Somerset. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to move on in. I have a really quick question. Carolyn used an acronym that I didn't know the spell. Is it F I R Q? What is FERC? Oh, it's the Federal Energy uh, Regulation hmm. Commission. The licensing Commission. So it's F E R F E R C. F E R C. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry, Denise. No, no, that's okay. Okay, so I did, I got an email from, I think I need to talk to. I don't know, Lily, Carolyn, maybe everybody here, a, an email from Alyssa LaRose and initially for complete neighborhoods, <clears throat> Lily had put, you'd put in for geothermal, decided no landscaping. I don't think that is necessarily gonna fly because um, we've gone over that. And I think Alyssa LaRose said that she wants to talk to us about the possibility of uh, talking about M Elm Circle, because that's coming up, I guess, for, so it, I, I, that's probably a separate conversation than from it's a here. separate conversation, but also we are now, anybody under 7,000 population doesn't have to meet the 10%. Right, right. And I, I understand that. But okay, so so for the use of this funds and for the planning and our next meeting is on the 17th. So Lily, maybe you can have some time or Carolyn or the three of us have some time to brainstorm and, and to get back to Alyssa. Okay, on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elm Circle okay. was in the circle that we created for the, for the complete name right. application. But what I don't understand is we were really clear about what we asked for and we got accepted. <laughs> And I, and I understand that, but you know, if you were at that meeting, you know, uh, anyway. All right. I, I don't understand. I, I don't mind doing this separately because there's no reason we can't get a parking design for our campus out of this. Okay. Well, let's 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 do that separately then and let's talk right. about that. Because right. yeah. Oh, but on another note, I'm sorry. Um, when we did have that meeting. Chris, Christine Medora, she said, would anyone like uh, like me to come and look at what, what they want to do? I said, yeah, sure, let's go, go down to South Deerfield. So she came down and I gave her a tour for the whole campus and she was really impressed with that. So she said, oh, you know, maybe we can brainstorm to see how we can use these funds, okay? So we've got that and then we've got Alyssa LaRose. So this is this is probably a separate conversation. So I'll, I'll talk to you about that after the meeting, okay? I think there's real possibilities. They have to spend the money. Yes. And they have to give us a certain percentage. So guess what? This yeah. is what we want. And then we'll try okay. to convince them that it Well, fits. we'll have that separate conversation and then I will try and convince them next <laughs> next Monday when we have that meeting. Um, okay. We did, I just learned from Casey the other day that we did finally receive final approval for shared streets, John for the crosswalks and for the beacons. And now it's really just putting it on the priority list of when this is happening. I think I think it's really good. And I think it's a good opportunity. I know that, you know, I sort of monitor Deerfield now and Julie Cavaco is now the crossing guard. And so she was slightly dismayed at how people zoom by and they just sort of ignore the crosswalk, which is not good. So I think it's pretty exciting that we finally got final approval to do this. So hopefully it'll cut down on some of the safety issues. Not and, near her. It has nothing to do with addressing where she directs traffic. Oh. So no, it's, it's always difficult when we hire people as new traffic control because yeah. you can be a uniform police officer and people almost take out your elbows with their mirrors. But the difference is with us, you just can't offend us. Like we're so used to it. It's just a standard day. You kind of just roll your eyes. Uh, you, when you take a civilian and you make them either a traffic flagger or a civilian pedestrian crossing guard, you know, it's always a difficult adjustment to, yeah. I guess, go out in traffic and have people act like knuckleheads. And literally, if you're taking your safety and the children's safety into account, 
And it's very dangerous. And that's why we ask them to pay attention to every single move because people out there can be very dangerous behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, my thoughts are once we do this, I think we, I think we can really spin it to, we have to spin it just to really emphasize how CCI, how we've been really instrumental in starting to move things forward in town. So I think we need to take every opportunity with the Leary lot, with whatever we do and get that out in press, get it out to the greater community. And that goes back to, I think what we asked, what Jim was doing as far as getting the word out. Yeah, so once we sign with an engineering firm, we'll go out to bid and we'll do those, uh, those three crossings mm -hmm. next, probably late spring, summertime. Those will be amazing. But what I would also do is let's reach back out to the FERCOG, Denise, and let's get right back on the next round and yep. let's do the crossing point where Julie's at, at the top of Pleasant Street. Let's rebuild that whole area mm -hmm. and let's put a flashing light in there as well. What are the other two locations for those? So right at Frontier Regional High School, the main yep. entrance, which you would know is like the south entrance. Then the back of the high school, we actually did uh, the north entrance to Frontier. And then there's an additional third light in crossing at the brand new park. Yeah to slow traffic down even north of the high school. Right. So it's traffic coming right into the center of town. Now, if we can take those three crossing points and around the Bloody Brook corner, now you come into where Julie is at Pleasant Street and we have another one, we're quelling traffic all the way into the center of town. So I think with you know the street projects, we keep going and pick mm -hmm. another two or three points in town that we wanna do. Yeah, yep. I think we could do that maybe in conjunction with the bike lane. Tim, Tim, and then Jim. Tim, um, John, I just wondered what your what your position is on raising cross crossing or raising, you know, near crosswalks or having the crosswalk raised to actually physically slow traffic. That was my question. Yeah, no, I, I love them. Green community folks will, uh, when they really do the research, will give you a tad bit of pushback because the emissions spilled out by the reacceleration of vehicles. There's pros and cons of them. So first of all, they quell traffic, but your people with loud exhaust, so your younger kids that are show-offs, they're just trying to learn their adulthood, are going to get out there and they're going to stomp on it right after they slow <laughs> down. So, you know, people often request speed bumps or the elevated crosswalks with me, and I, I have to tell them, be careful what you wish for, because you have to go through the true list of pros and cons. It absolutely does slow traffic down, but it creates more emissions and it does create the flip side where now people are racing to get back up to speed in between them. They absolutely can be gorgeous. All of us have driven through Amherst and Northampton and other communities where when they're done right with bricks, they really can look beautiful and accent the community. I love, love, love them. Mm -hmm. but you know, I, I love going through the list of pros and cons with everybody so people can really know what they're getting involved in. Yeah, so I was thinking specifically um, in the crosswalks and the lights going across to the, what we hope is the park. And mm -hmm. then that would slow traffic near Frontier. Maybe you have another one where there's in front of Frontier. And then you have another one where Julie is for the DES crossing. And then that would be one little area where nobody could really speed up and slow down in these places. Because um, once you force them to slow down before mm -hmm. that bloody brook corner, um, you got to be going slow to go around there anyway. Uh, um, so I don't know. I'm just a just a cute. Good yeah, know they're amazing drunk driving tests. Oh yeah. <laughs> when, they, when people hit them at about midnight and they have no idea. I mean. Literally, there are local folks, people that hit the bloody brook and take out that corner. The vast majority are either residents or people that were born or raised here and live in surrounding communities. And their blood alcohol is just, we'll say, slightly too high. And they forget <laughs> the corners there. So, yeah, when you see a cargo airborne three feet in the air, we call that a clue. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I lived for a spell in, in Ithaca, and it was a section where there was a stop sign at every block. And Nevertheless, on Saturday nights, there would be people on motorcycles who would get up to like, you know, 45 miles per hour and then stop for the strap stop sign and then get up to 45 miles an hour and then stop at the stop sign <laughs> all the way down the street. Yeah, no, I love them. We put them in for Deerfield Academy because we had a true problem with the students up there. 
I mean, just, you know, you're dealing with 15 to 19 year olds that just don't look. Even when you're standing on the side of the road saying, hey, guys, you got to look. They still don't look. So we literally had to put them in up there. We ran into drainage issues. They weren't engineered. Um, a company told Deerfield Academy that they did them in quotes all the time. They installed them and I'm like, those are not adequate. Oh my God, there's not even a bump there. So we had to have them redone like three times over. They really have to be engineered correctly. They have to look beautiful. They have to fit in and serve their purpose. But there's a lot of drainage issues that go on with them. And snow removal, Kevin is going to throw a fit if I tell him I'm recommending them. But it is what it is. Hey, John, I love going over those speed bumps by DA on my bike. I really gun it and go over. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's really fun. Okay, I'm just going to continue on with my report. Um, I met with uh, Casey and I've been meeting with Alice, the grant writer, on the efficiency and re regionalization grant. And we've gotten a letter of support already from Waitley. And I just spoke with the uh, town administrator from, no wait, we got one from Central. I, I spoke with the guy um, from Waitley today and they're going to be giving, let's see, I think the select board is meeting on the 25th and hopefully Joyce will, they'll give us a letter of support for that. And that is, if we get that money, it's up to $200,000, okay? Let's see, the second part of the grant is, no, this is a different grant. It's called the best practices. That's to, that's to assess the current and future municipal employment needs and identify gaps and inefficiencies that also incorporate diversity, equity, and inclusion into the hiring practice. So that goes right along with, um, what's it, DIG, the Deerfit Inclu Inclusion Group that has brought that up to the select board and the select board coming out with a statement. So I think we're moving in the right direction on that. Um, and that, you know, Casey feels that <clears throat> that should be pretty easy money to get, hopefully to do that. And then within that, there's a second, second best practice. And I'm not sure about that because since we did apply for the federal grant for the geothermal exchange, we were going to do it for the shared energy infrastructure because we weren't sure whether we could do the federal grant. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got Alice looking over the narrative and the summary for the federal grant to see whether it's actually worth it to use this to apply. If not, we'll hopefully find something else to get money for something else. Okay. Um, and I think that's about it for anything that I've done lately. So are there any other, any other businesses, business that's not reasonably just, sorry, I'm really fried. Well, uh, it's Tim? actually on the agenda before mm -hmm. the other business now. Oh, right, okay. And it's my hobby horse. What can I say? I think it will. Okay. It's Before she gets on her horse, can I just say one <laughs> thing I forgot? Um, GEI, whom as I said, GEI consultants was instrumental in getting this geothermal grant written. Their, their um, management team wants the town to sign, but just essentially a release form letter saying, oh, right. we, although we, were, we prepared this stuff, we're not responsible for it. Uh, and so um, I had asked, um, it's a pro forma letter. And, and I, I would like to get a sense from Carolyn whether she thinks we would feel comfortable asking Casey to just, just give them this signed letter. I, I do, I do. It, I mean, it's just, all they're gonna do, it's a grant, we're applying for a grant for design. So, right. you know, if we get it, then we're going to be have input to the design and I feel like we'll have some control over it. So anything that they missed, well, we should take responsibility to participate and fix. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there, this is, that's just a standard thing. Right. Uh, that's what I think as well. They're just, you know, they, they're doing this on spec, truthfully. Mm -hmm. They want us to work with them and uh, they're looking for communities that were a good bet. We're a good bet. And we have a good story, so I hopefully we'll get this and um, we'll work with them. You know, 
I'm, I'm reaching out and working, trying to get information from Smith College and, you know, keep in touch with some of the other geothermal projects that are around from our, you know, senior housing uh, committee efforts. So, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I've learned a lot already and that's what we have to do is we have to, all of us have to participate and, and, you know, ask questions and make sure it fits. Because in my mind, the most important thing is the calculations and the usage. And if we screw up on that, that's our own fault because, you know, we're, we're telling the, them the information and we'll get it double checked. I think yeah. every project from now on should all always be double checked anyway. So, um, you know, the, but my, my information is that the calculations on usage is the most critical part of the geothermal. The actual wells are kind of cheap. The, the hooking up of the geothermal is similar to any other energy system. So there's no extra cost really there. It's just the calculations. And if you screw up the calculations then you screw up the whole project. So it's, it's key to us to say, <clears throat> In your housing, this is going to be the use and the hours and the kind of stuff that's happening at the library. This is what's going to happen in the church. This is happening at the town hall, the police station, the senior center. It's up to us to tell them what the calculations are, and then it's up to us to double check. So I feel, you know, yeah. it's, it's fine, Tim. Good. So do we want to do this officially, and I'll make a motion to tell Casey to sign this letter. Yes, yes and I'll second that. And all in favor? I Carolyn. I Tim Helge. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, that way she doesn't have I to. I think, think it's about a good it. idea, even if I'm not on your board. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that okay. being engaged in the calculations is what's really huge, and having us yeah. all as a committee get together and making sure that we're, yeah. we're we don't miss anything is is going to be key. I think so. The good. The good thing is that they're just asking for uh, forgiveness right now, and if we get a grant, that's when they'll actually determine. Right. What is the volume of space that you're going to heat and cool in each building, and how are you going to balance it, and how big a field do you need? So, and that's it, that's where that's where we have an engineer to help us do. Work. Yeah, right. And we just have people double checking seriously. All right, I'm going to move on back to Lily. And okay, so this is a community outreach work group. Okay, which we don't officially have, but Jim wrote the wrote the document so that's the first step the second step is the dissemination of the document and talking to people in town so i the, one of the things that um <clears throat> i wanted to bring up is that um tim called me today and we were talking about stuff and he said that mr upton came forward with some alternative ideas last night and stuff but what that um we don't have a fixed plan because so much depends on money, money. right and um that maybe it is better to stay sort of fluid now and not do an extensive outreach but more along the lines of what jim did and call that good for now until we see how mm -hmm. things let's i mean the library is like this um was a keystone right in a way um and to understand i mean there's um it there's a lot of stuff it sounds like people were revisiting and all this kind of stuff and it, it can be a little frustrating if you've been working on something and then you have people who haven't participated pop in with their ideas but it's also good right it's both but in other words i don't think we're ready for um I think it's critical that we tell people that we're doing this and so they understand there's some level of coordinated mm -hmm. thing and I think Jim's piece might do that and that maybe I will I was going to offer to like turn my little hobby horse into maybe a donkey for now <laughs> just go for the town meeting handout so people know that this is happening but I think we should promote people coming to CCI and you know coming to these meetings they they won't but to say please come and, and and this is where you will hear mm -hmm. everybody talking about what they're doing and um it's i think it's fascinating i i'm this is like one of my favorite endless meetings okay so lily my question to the group is 
are all of you going back and giving a report to your respective committees on, on some of the high points of what's happening on CCI? Yes. I know Jim and Julie did because I witnessed that, <laughs> but I don't know, you know, is everyone else doing that? I mean, I think, I think that's our, all of our responsibility to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. we try to talk about it on the select board level, just because yeah. I think it's important to have more information out there. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I mean, we had our first C CIPC meeting for a few months now, and yeah. you know, we didn't review that at all because we had time constraints. So, yeah, you know, am I a hundred percent gonna, you know, commit to saying yes? I will always do it. No, but we'll try. I think but it's, I think, it's I think a suggestion. If you look at the minutes, you can, they're just bullets about what people say. Mm -hmm. And um, it's probably worth walking through because I think Denise is right. I mean, I may, I don't at senior housing because everybody on senior housing was also oh. on the committee for oh, one yeah. or another. <laughs> but, yeah. but now if I'm going to do the conservation commission, I got to bring it back. I mean, not the conservation, the CPC, mm -hmm. whatever, one of those C things, then I got to bring it back. I think that's a really good point. Some of the, some of the high points just to say, have we, you know, we're all working on this. And I think you're right, Lily, it is fluid and nothing is set in stone. And I think that's important for people to know that and that we have to be flexible. We have to be nimble with what we're doing. You know, to say that things are set in stone would be, you know, sort of ridiculous at this point, but there are projects moving forward. And I think it's important for the, you know, for people in town to know that. And on that note, I'm going to ask if anyone wants to, if there's no other business, does someone want to make a motion? Because I feel pretty fried right now. John, <laughs> sorry. Give a couple of hands up. Sorry. John and Jim. Just very, very quickly on the main town hall page, it would be good if there was a generalized synopsis of each project and bringing it up to date. That would put the townspeople at the forefront because people have no idea that all these projects are going on and they get overwhelmed. If there was just a very quick synopsis of two or three sentences about each project and it was updated once a month where the townspeople could go to the main page, literally it, it would be ecstatic with the folks in town. Julie? Yes, um, I'm a similar idea. Yes, that, you know, I think it's important to not simply present everyone with this fait accompli that they haven't heard of until it comes to a vote at the town meeting or whatever, because I think that in, is what encourages a lot of the sort of suspicion. It's like, you know, where did this come from? <laughs> no. Then just to ta tag along on that. I mean, one of the things about Jeff's, Jeff Upton's um, comments last night was revealing because we had just at the previous annual town meeting voted for $475,000 to be spent analyzing the 1888 building as a future town hall. And it wasn't like many of the people, Jeff included, partic didn't participate in that. And yet it was still like, well, why don't we make the church the town hall? And it's, it's like, so anyway, it's, you can never, you, you can never not educate people too often. So I think it's a good idea to put it on the website or, and try to update it on a monthly basis or six weeks. Who in town? I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Who what? Who does those updates? Well, that, that's, uh, what is that outreach committee? Who's the new assistant town administrator. He just doesn't know it yet. Ah, it's Chris. Chris. Yes. yes, and Chris will be told eventually. Yeah, in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> With that said, I'll uh, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Well, I'll second it. Second that. <laughs> oh, well, it. And the select board will make a motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Uh, you know, well, 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 we didn't set the next meeting. We didn't set the next meeting. Yeah, I was going to say we can't vote on it yet. Uh, it's going to be after the annual town meeting, right? Yeah, okay. But it's, it's, yeah, we should still set it now because. While you're looking at your calendars, can I throw a comment out that maybe Jim's that write up should be put on the um, town website and sent out in that email that you get that has stuff in it? 
Yeah, I'm it's a great idea. Links. Already written too. Hey, when Which... I do the email about special town meeting, oh, if there's oh, any oh. forms or links, or I can add all that in. Oh, great idea. So I just sent the the um, draft that I that we printed out to to Denise. So if you want to forward that to other people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can um, send that to everyone on CCI. Okay. Um, so how about, let's see, town meetings 24th, then. Huh. We'll stick to Thursday. Cause if we do have about the 10th. I'm then, sorry, we have what? Are we sticking to Thursdays? Cause if we do, how about the 10th? That, yeah, um, that's fine. Senior housing, senior housing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. November 10th at 630. I have a meeting at seven on the 10th. Uh, okay. But I can skip this one. Um, do you want to do Wednesday or we can't? I can do Wednesday, the 9th, you mean? Um, I think I don't think that's a selectman's meeting because we're meeting on the second. Okay. So November 9th? Yeah, we could we want you to be here, Julie. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'd like to. <laughs> so okay, November 9th at 6 30. I will send that out tomorrow and I will send out what Jim sent. Okay, and I will check with Jennifer Remillard on what's what's what. Okay. I probably will do the email for the special town meeting on the Friday before. So anything that, you know, Jim, Julie from finance, anything you guys want included or with finance meeting that Friday, if you want me to hold off yeah. and do it on Saturday, I'm more than happy to as well. You guys let me know what works for you and I'll, uh, I'll take care of it. Wonderful. And do we want to try to get it on the town website um, that Jim's thing on the town website or just do this all in a packet as the town meeting thing with the email i, yeah. I don't know what do you think if it's on the town packet i mean that would be great we can put it on the website afterwards i think we should do both i mean okay. it could be something on the website anyway and, and was there a, was there a graphic that was going to be a, i can't remember if we talked about in addition to the words Julie provided a very nice map. And it was a map from the library, credited. wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it the library architect, Jim, that I grabbed? Or did I just grab that off the... Um, I might have just grabbed no, it this off. was just a, a map showing which buildings are... Which buildings are which, yeah. Of it. yeah. You should also have the CCI logo with your with what you did, Jim. I couldn't find it. Um, it's, a, it's, on, it's on our Google Drive. Okay, I'm not sure I have access to that. You should. Um, yeah, Lily. I thought didn't you give you gave Jim access? Okay, I'll, I'll look right. again. I, I, I think right. what we should do is the day before every CCI meeting, we should sing, send a link to everybody saying you have access to the Google Drive. Right. You do, I'll, Jim. I'll, I'll, I, I did spend some time. Can I put that there. in the reminder that I'm sending <laughs> out two days before every meeting? You're an editor, Jim, so you're fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, did we did we vote to oh no uh so we did we made motions but um i lily wait say i or i guess the select board did close it but yeah uh, we both agree that the select board meeting should close i okay. tend to no i carolyn ness i don't need to say how many votes yes yes <laughs> all right good night everyone good night oh, thanks hey, everyone. guys all right i'm gonna Bye. stop